Good morning. I am Emerson Moda. I work for Cisco and currently I am distinguished systems engineer. Sometimes when I introduce myself, I have to explain what a distinguished system engineer does in Cisco. And basically, I'm part of a very small group of Cisco. In the world, we must have around 30 or slightly above 30 distinguished system engineers in Cisco. And what we do is we basically work with the industry and in innovations from technology or network architecture po point of view that resolve big common problems within the market. In my case, I work with the telcos. I've been working for 20 years with all of the telcos, and today I will talk about segment routing that, in my view, is one of the technologies that achieves this target. If you stop and think, probably the greatest innovation in terms of routing architecture that exists, and this is why this is in vogue in the industry. So which are the problems that the telcos are trying to t tackle? And it's very simple to explain. If we see what is happening in the market, there are three major problems that affect the operator's point of view. One would be the expon exponential growth of traffic because we still cannot visualize this and we really don't know how this, when will this will stop or when it will drop. The second problem is that unfortunately the revenues of the operators do not grow at the same proportion as traffic does. If they would, well, we wouldn't have any problems. We would just continue investing, doing business as usual, and then we would resolve our problems. Now the third problem here, I believe that it's a bit more complicated because if we analyze the cost model of our telcos today, there is a component that is very difficult to tackle. That is the operational cost. Although we've made progress in technology that has been excellent in the past years, this has strongly contributed for the cost reduction in investment of infrastructure. But the operational cost, well, we haven't been able to diminish them, not at least at the scale that is needed today. So within this entire context, what they have tried to do is the telcos are trying to differentiate the services that they offer and to tackle the cost problem, let's say, in a more <clears throat> in a model that is geared toward the reduction of OPEX. So within this entire context, <laughs> could you please go to the forward slide, to the next slide, because the pointer isn't working here. No, the Cisco strategy here is very clear in the world of networks. What we have tried to do is to tackle the complexity of networks and segment routing is a very important uh, strategy of Cisco and looking for other network architectures that are more interesting from the operations optimization point of view. There's a great movement from the industry and I believe that many of you are aware of it. That would be the virtualization of network functions with the objective of simplifying the deployment model of these network and to use infrastructure that allows us to better share and to use much better our infrastructure strongly focused on automation. So everything that we try to do today in Cisco, if you go to a Cisco event, if you read Cisco's literature today in our internet web page, I guarantee that you will not see one article, one page, or a presentation that doesn't talk about automation. Everything that we do sees automation. It wouldn't be different from the network point of view. Great part of our work is to create a more favorable environment to, toward automation and in addition to this, to make the best of the tools, APIs, and interfaces that we know that other segments of the industry have been using very efficiently, efficiently ta taking them to the world of network. So program is very important for Cisco within this code. Well, here we have segment routing. Segment route, routing appeared more or less after 
the industry started talking about SDN. And I believe that that was the perfect match because SDN proposes a more schedulable, open architecture. And we have to bring this to the context of the telcos where we have distributed networks that have SLA requirements, operational requirements that are not easy to deal with. And segment routing enables the possibility to have a schedulable uh, network for an organized uh, networks because we need resilience. Another thing that segment routing does that I will mention is we look for operability with existing environments like, for example, the <clears throat> The, like MPLS, this could be a major innovation that could be deployed in a very simple fashion in existing networks. And it provides us tools that will allow the telco not to not also to optimize cost, but to offer differentiated services. There are some additional tools that were also included in segment routing so that we can resolve other operational problems that the telcos have to face. One of them would be capacity planning. So I generally tell people that the capacity planning tool, which is the mo which is the capacity planning tool that is most used in the world, Microsoft Excel, that's the one that's used most in the world. Now, who believe that this is the proper tool to do your planning? Any volunteers? Do you believe that this is the right pool? What is the difficulty that we do to plan our network? One is to understand the network. Excel only works based on information that somebody enters manually inside the spreadsheets. Now, the idea model that we have is to have an automation tools that collect information from the network, place this in a software, and can you, we can apply different algorithms to understand the behavior, growth, failure scenarios within the network. So segment routing provides us this automation. And at last, something that comes together with segment routing. It resolves problems from the infrastructure availability point of view. So the question is, I said very good things about segment routing, but how does this work in practice? How does how many of you have heard of segment routing, actually? I expected more hands, so very few of you have heard about segment routing. Let's see how it works. And before I explain the slide to you, perhaps I would tell you a story of how the invention process took place. There was a there is a Cisco fellow that is the highest level within the technical career in Cisco. There is a person, Clarice Pearson, that was the inventor of segment routing. And the book that he wrote about segment routing, he tells us what the story was, what was his intuition to create segment routing. Clarence lives in Brussels, in Belgium, and apparently he loves traveling and he likes driving. And one of his trips, he was thinking, well, how am I going to plan what is going to be my route to go to Rome? And according to him, what he does is he loves listening to the radio before he re when he leaves, he starts listening to the radio and he receives some news that, I don't know, that one of the stretches from of his roots has a problem, well, he is not going to start thinking what street, what deviation he's going to take. He's going to step. He's going to think about step by step of the alternative path he will take to Rome. He thinks, what is going to be my next destination in the middle of the way that can take me to Rome in a quick fashion? So in his mind, he thought, if the shortest road isn't an option, what I'm going to do is I am going to deviate to Geneva, and then I will sh follow the shortest path to Rome. And this is segment routing. It is how can I apply all of these traffic policies without using the traditional model of traffic engineer where I have to define link by link, node by node, where I'm going to steer the traffic, that this is one of the challenges of the telcos have. The only way 
or before segment routing, the only way we could optimize traffic within a network was carrying out traffic engineering in this level of details. And this was very expensive because we had to schedule this in each one of the network elements that was in the middle of the way. So it's segment routing. With segment routing, we start work with the segment concept. Now, segment is nothing more and nothing less than an instruction to the router of what they're going to do to the router. This could be the segment concept is broadly used for a number of instructions within a network with segment routing. For instance, the instruction at the end of the line, it's translated into segment, could be, you know, take the shortest path until your destination with a prefix or use a specific link between two routers or or take the shortest distance to I don't know a neighbor through a GP address and when you combine these instructions that are codified with mechanisms with the minimum amount of instructions, we can define any traffic policy within a network. So in this case, this example here, I could start at this no node I, and I could go to this to router number seven if I want to use the shortest route with an instruction that is a segment that I codify within my header of the package. All the elements that are in the middle of the way will know what to know with it, what to do with this instruction. So this is called a global segment ID. This is the instruction. Now there are specific cases where perhaps I will have to make a local decision when one element will know what to do with this instruction, and we have local segment IDs for this. So in this case, if I want to create a policy that defines the same traffic between node one and node seven, should reach this router here deviate toward this interface and from here proceed to through the shortest path, I could code this information with uh, my packet in the header of the packet that I want to send. As an architecture, this was defined in a generic way, so there are no restrictions from the architecture point of view. If this is going to be due based on a protocol or in an architecture where I use a external plant control or no control of data planning, this could be applied to any type of architecture. From the practical point of view, the more mature a deployment is on MPLS, and the other one is on IPv6. Now, how these instructions are disseminated through the network could be based on IGP, or it could be through the SDN, and here we have some cases of use where we use SDN controllers or external elements to calculate all of these pathways within the network, depending on the objective. And as I mentioned here, if I want to operate a network with these characteristics, without traffic engineering only using the benefits of segment routing, I could use the logic of IGP or also in most of the cases we will have a combination between IGP, DGP and traffic engineering tactic, traffic engineering that we can use to, devi to deviate the traffic or steer away the traffic in the network. We have only good things. This is a list that is a reference for you, but it's very difficult to find a problem within the segment routing architecture, not only because it allows us to create new network architecture and we can make the best out of SDN, as also because it resolves other problems that until the moment hadn't been properly resolved within the routing architectures. So here we have some use cases to explain these problems to you. But number one, a point that is very important to understand, segment routing, as I mentioned, it coexists with traditional architectures. So in an MPLS network, what segment routing allows you to do, you can use the MPLS network. You can uh, enable DLP. You will only have segment routing, enable SNDP, PL, and replace these functions. In the case of LDP, it goes to IGP, SSOPR, in the case SSBPR, 
we we can have a centralized control we can use a pce but many people are don't want to do this from day to night very few people want to enable all of these things to familiar until they become familiarized with the technology so what we do is we implement in stages you can have a network segment here is the core okay that enables segment routing and other domains of the networks you maintain the LDP and there is a mapping server that allows you to translate both worlds now in this network segment where I am going to implement segment routing I can enable both worlds at the same time I could have LDP and enable segment routing and work with traffic that will use segment routing and the other ones that will use traditional mechanisms but this interoperability with the existing world is possible with segment routing as you can see here now a problem and I discussed this together with the industry a problem that it resolves is how it makes quick convergence in independent and networks regardless of topology and without traffic engineering tools. So the case of segment routing. Together with segment routing, we created topology, independent loop-free outage, alternate using these instructions that we codify in the packets with segment routing, we pre-calculate alternative pathways. And when we have a failure scenario, while the network is in the convergence process, we use these alternative pathways that are free of looping in order to steer the traffic. And this was easy to pre-calculate. Well, it was less than 50 milliseconds. I have more information for you, but this is something that you can resolve with segment routing. Convergency, less than 50 milliseconds for any network topology. The second practical problem that segment routing resolves is micro-loop avoidance. We know that in heterogeneous networks where you have routers with capacity of processing, when something goes wrong, people think, well, how are we going to resolve the problem to converge the network and here you may have some element in the middle of the way a router that still hasn't had its convergency so here we steer traffic to a link and then they believe that the same link is an optimum pathway to reach the destination here you see a simple topology here we have a link with a high metric and through normal pathways here I'm deviating my traffic after failure through this pathway all of them all of them will steer the traffic back. And here we have a micro loop. So segment routing, we resolve this problem the same way that we resolve the problem of quick convergence with calculations from the beginning to be able to deviate traffic to a point of a network so I can lead, reach my destination without, without creating micro loops. Another problem that is practical that I mentioned is what is the network behavior all these traffic matrices are cre are created with netflow there we have to collect a lot of information from the network and process to create traffic matrices what we did here we created sensors within the router send interfaces and we use these sensors to generate telemetry that is the is a granular granular level of information with more uh, with more information so we can create these information matrices in an automated fashion there is another category of use cases that are more or less the lines of the SDN or how we use architectures of modern networks using software functionalities and how we try to optimize the network if you remember one of the problems that I mentioned was the growth of traffic although it's tempting to believe that we're going to resolve the problem of the traffic giving more capacity to the network in practice this is not the best solution so the problem of traffic growth this optimizes the use of the existing infrastructure so we have to try to optimize this infrastructure and for this we need two things one we need mechanisms that allow us to better use the available links of the network and also segment routing although it's possible to create 
traffic policy, traffic engineering policy where we're going to define the pathway hop by hop. In this case, this is not a desirable scenario like this topology to start from this router and to reach router three of my policy is to avoid this link. Perhaps it's a link with a problem that has a lot of failure. If I use the traffic engineering mechanisms, I'm only going to define one pathway and I miss the opportunity to have thy multipath. Segment routing as we are using the logic of routing and IGP, this comes for free. So we don't have to worry about about creating a number of, tum of tunnels to create a multipath. Another problem is how we have a global view of networks. So many times the networks are major. We have to segment in a number of IGPs, sometimes IBGPs and ISs. And this is difficult to resolve today. Very few telcos can do traffic engineering when you go under a number of network domains. How does segment routing resolve this? And this is when we start using the idea of SDN, where you have have a global view of the network. And this element that has the global view of the network is called a path computation element. We can have a number of these elements that talk amongst them. And what they do, they create the topology of the to of the network and by end. And once they create this topology of the network, then they expose this information to some type of use or for some type of application. We have the segment routing that is on demand next hops where a certain application or a user can query. This type of centralized intelligence that you have in the PC, PC gives them an answer that in what kind in terms of what kind of information they have to codify in the packet in the origin so that traffic is steered to us through a certain way. So this will allow us not only to carry out the traffic engineer end to end and things that are not possible to do today in networks that use the classical model, like, for example, the idea of having a network where within the same topology I can create multiple router logics a network with the SPF once it's calculated. What are the shortest pathways? This is based on one only metric. If I would like a metric that tells me I want to, I want my routing to be the pathway with less latency for traffic, but perhaps for another type of traffic that is not so important. I want a cheaper path or a shorter path. Today, the algorithms don't allow us to do is with segment routing, one of the things that was deployed was the ability to have a number of routing algorithms analyzing the same network topology. So this allows us to do these things. So I can create segments of networks that respect certain logics. In this case, it would be I could have the segment of the network that is a slice that is something that you will see in 5G networks that have low latency, but the rest of the network f follows the shortest path. And then the same way I, I can query as well a PC, and PC is going to tell me the path uh, of lower latency between origin and destination. Use this that was quantified in the origin, and then the network will know how to resolve this. And there are other problems that are resolved when we have high availability networks. How do you deviate the traffic toward a certain plane of the network with segment routing? Once again, we have this type of logic, and we can create algorithms that are independent per plane, and then traffic is steered toward a plane respecting the local logics of this routing plane and imposing the segment identifiers at the origin. So to end. I believe that I'm at the end of my presentation. Segment routing today is more mature, and as I mentioned, they are codified using L LDPS labels. There are different ways of doing the MPLS. 
I can give you more information for those that are interested in this. And they asked me to talk about the adoption of segment routing. Today, there is an ever-growing amount of telcos that are analyzing segment routing. I work with most of the telcos in Latin America, major in Europe, US, Asia. Everybody has their eyes on segment routing. There is not one telco that is analyzing segment routing. And here we have some examples of of some of them that announce publicly, but there are other telcos that are putting these ideas in practice. This is not something for tomorrow, a year, for three years. Uh, well, as I said, things are happening today. So well, with this, I can bring this presentation to an end. With this summary, I believe there are only good things to, talk, to tell about segment routing. It resolves practical problems, and if we would like to create more efficient networks to serve the demand, from here on, mainly things with 5G. I personally believe that we will not have another option than working with segment routing and other network architectures because segment routing allows us to implement, the, in addition to the fact that segment routing resolves the operational problems. And if we analyze this closely, we can see that this is one of the major problems that our telcos are going to have to resolve. I don't know if you have any questions something that you would like me to clarify? Chuck, first, congratulations for your presentation. Excellent. I have two questions here. One would be regarding traffic engineering based on volume. As you have in the T, you have an auto banner that does this automatically for you. What is what is the alternative in segment routing that doesn't have this visibility of traffic engineering? How to bring traffic management automatically and transition when you're going to have a mixed network, you know, running TE and an adjacent protocol that does not take can how do you coex how do you make both worlds coexist and the adoption of segment routing due to new technologies as dpm v vxlan and we see that there are trends from major data centers to use it and this can also migrate to the telcos they're now not building they're not building a networks based on mpls but yes and vxlan so how do you see these two things? Well, first question, OK? How do we account band bandwidth and segment routing? I think that the first question is, who really uses traffic engineering accounting band hop mal hop? If you read a book from segment routing wrote by Clarence, He's one of the authors. He says that when they started to develop segment routing, they carried out a, a, um, a survey with the telcos and because they wanted to see how much they used. And the number, well, was extremely low, very low. Number one, less than 10% of the telcos use traffic engineering. And out of these 10%, only a small amount uses traffic engineering with bandwidth accounting hop by hop. Why? Because it's difficult to do this. And and I'm not go this is not a justification to tell you that segment routing doesn't need it. Of course, segment routing facilitates the network architecture that has this type of intelligence, but it tackles this a different way. Instead of putting this in the control planning, segment routing, what it does, it uses the idea of having controllers. So the idea to have different mechanisms to collect this type of information from the network, like SMP, and you feed this information to a software, software is going to count this. They use a bandwidth within the network infrastructure. This, I don't know the SMP, but this can be a combination of SMP with NetFlow or a telemetry that I mentioned here. And then the software, the software is going to make the, take the decision so you, so you can distribute your traffic to optimize your bandwidth. So this is something that they can do. Another thing that you mentioned was coexistence with other mechanisms like EDPM and VXLAN. Number one, we have to understand the EDPM is, is within a service layer, so a deployment. 
a, a deployment more of IGP more unified to have services to deal with layer one, two, and three, always with the same signal. But it doesn't exclude the possibility of using segment routing in the data planning. They do coexist. What we don't know is the following, that there are a number of cases where we want to interconnect uh, interconnect worlds that don't speak with MPLS. So there is a great data center where perhaps I'm going to have to bring a lot of traffic and within the data center I use VXLAN. How do I interconnect it with MPLS? So this is something that is being worked on. We can do the stitch so to join both worlds today. What we're pursuing now and until last week I gave a talk about this in Cancun at Cisco Live. What we want to do is the following and there are a number of ways of tackling the problem. One of them would, tack would be to tackle the problem doing a control planning with, with signal is, signals end by end. Now, there is another type of solution for this type of problem that would be to tackle it in a superior layer of policies. So for example, you could have a layer where you abstract the data planning and here you can say, well, my policy is, is this, this, and that. I have to reach the closest data center and the application in the data center and through orchestration layer you can also apply this policy in the necessary settings and in the different network segments, be it MPLS, VXLAN, IPv6, whatever. So we're working with these two lines today. You can do a stitch, but this is something that is done case by case, okay? There is no level of automation as we would like there to be and how to automate this. Well, we're analyzing this, okay? But I believe it's not going to take a long time until we have something available for you. I really don't know if I answered your question. Thank you very much. Much. Okay, so I believe that this was what I wanted to say. If you have any additional questions, I will be at your disposal and I can talk to you later on. Thank you very much.